Of all the superhero shows that I could sit down and watch, this wouldn't be my first choice. And that's just because I like things to be happier than what it usually is in The Boys, but I still have to tune in for every new episode to see what kind of prophetic visions the writers had. Plus, it's hilarious. And though it's the furthest thing you can get from a comfort watch, it's still really entertaining. Because I can't deny how great it is to see more of the boys being the boys, even though a lot of them are not. Frenchie was gone for a while, but we still got to see the group back together, and as harrowing as it typically is, I just love watching them and their sometimes toxic dynamics. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the Talking Sentient Sandwich, and I doubt it's an unpopular opinion, but I think The Boys is spectacular. It's just the right blend of comedy, drama, superhero action, and gruesome body horror, all wrapped up into one surprisingly inclusive package. At times, it becomes live-action South Park for an offhanded skit or joke, and every time something like that would pop up, I couldn't help but chuckle. From making fun of Marvel's release schedule and budgeting, to calling out real-life bigots and oppressors, this show does not miss when it comes to its commentary. And every time they take a break to create another season, I was always worried the writers would come back pulling their punches, but the show has been consistent throughout. However, what I loved most about this season was how the show is clearly coming to a point. Point. I've noticed with the boys specifically, there's not much of an A or a main plot. Obviously, the narrative's endgame is to stop Homelander, but the characters seem to go about the most roundabout way of getting to their goal every time, as well as just having lives of their own. And not just that, there's a whole lot of side stories fleshing out different corners of this world, and that is very true for this season. I do wish there was more forward progression in the narrative, with there being a lot of back and forth as the characters create and debate bait some virus, yet all of that did feel necessary and important, plus it added drama. Also, I loved the inclusion of Sister Sage. I was expecting some kind of Lex Luthor interpretation, and I guess that is kind of the closest comic book comparison we have. Comment below if you have a better comparison. But she was a very different and very real analysis of what having super intelligence would be like. She can always see the bigger picture, which for the main characters gets terrifying at times, to the point that every little thing she said or did I overanalyzed. But that doesn't mean she isn't human, or doesn't have human and characteristics. She gets lazy, indulges maybe too many of her desires, and though they are extremely rare, makes mistakes. And paired with her introduction is Homelander just losing it. I'll talk a lot more about him in the spoiler section, but for now, I'll just say that he's a fantastic villain through and through. I remember way back when the first season had just come out in 2019 thinking this show was special just because every time Homelander was on screen, I was terrified for everyone else. And the boys has been able to maintain that horror throughout the years. And for that, I commend the writers and VFX artists that make the performance possible, but most of all, I commend Anthony Starr. And of course, there should be the same level of care put into the opposite side. And thankfully, it really is. I've already mentioned how great the team dynamics between everyone is, but for me, the heart and soul of the show is the father-son relationship between Ryan and Butcher. And we all know how that will inevitably be heartbreaking. But if you haven't seen this latest season of The Boys, or haven't finished watching it, check it out. Because now, it's time to get into some spoilers, because I can't be vague forever. And by spoilers, I mean season finale spoilers right away. You have been warned. Starting with Butcher, I thought everything about his character was amazing. The whole season, I was waiting for him to bite the bullet. Not to the extent of, say, Viserys and House of Dragon. They clarify that Butcher has six months at the beginning of the season, but still, his days are very numbered. Or, they were. There was a throwaway line about him attempting to take a full V drug in hopes it might cure him, and I figured that was going to come back, and I had many questions as I watched the season, like, does he have some kind of parasite living inside him, or is that just a visual representation of the tumor in his brain? But I was not ready for the Stranger Things tentacles. And I had guessed long before the reveal that Jeffrey Dean Morgan was inside Butcher's head, but the way that was filmed was incredible. It was crass, but it was a perfect way of showing Butcher's angry and sometimes violent side that we all know he has. And this is nothing more than speculation for the next season, but at the end of the day, I have a feeling Butcher is going to go out on his own terms, whatever form that may take. And aside from him, I kinda wish Frenchie and Kamiko didn't get together in the end, with them coming to the conclusion that their friendship was more important than a romance in the last season. But hey, if they're happy, I'm happy. 
But you know who isn't happy? Huey. Huey got such a raw deal this season. I'm of two minds about it. Obviously, in a narrative sense, I want to see the characters struggle, but Huey is still too innocent for any of this. His storyline of having to forgive his mom was great, and I'm glad he's a better person for it, but that doesn't change how emotional that storyline got. When his dad called him his wee Huey, that really got to me. In fact, that entire scene of Huey and his mom having to say goodbye was so sad. Simon Pegg was only ever put in the show because Huey in the comics is sketched after him, but it's incredible that that level of storytelling was given to an inconsequential character for what was nothing more than filler, but still felt so much grander. And in the finale, Huey got to live some of his happiest moments ever, and none of it was real. Though he gets a nice speech in the last episode to tie everything together. But along with that, Annie goes through it as well. She has some performance anxiety with her powers, questioning who she even is, and in the last couple of episodes is chained up and has her identity stolen. And although she did have quite a lot to do, it still makes me think that she'll have a lot more to do and be a bigger focus next season. And at this point, I'm pretty much just listing off how bad everyone had it. But you know what? M.M. had it relatively nice. Him attempting to protect his family while also having panic attack issues made me very worried about whether or not he was going to make it out alive. But he did, and seeing him care for his family is always pleasant. But with the boys covered, I want to move on and talk about Homelander. Because like I talked about before, he's not doing well. And not just that, he hasn't thought out anything in his plan. He was smart enough to hire Sage who could think about the bigger picture, but he was still too stupid and prideful to keep listening to her advice. And that makes for the best kind of character that you love to hate. Everything about him is really well done. Though I am still concerned for the fans that see him as the protagonist. But I also really liked how he needs his legacy. And not just that, he needs it to be perfect. And he has this company mindset that he knows is holding him back and he tries to push past it, but it's all he's capable of. And then there's his new side boo, Firecracker, or Milk Dispenser more like, who's put there to be a foil for Annie and just to be hated. But also, am I the only one who thought she had the killing virus in the finale? She was coughing up a storm and I was waiting for her to blow chunks and infect the other seven. But that never happened. Just a red herring, I guess. But another element of this season that was superb was A-Train. His redemption was not unexpected with what the writers had been doing with his character in the last season, but it was still really great to see. The moment he took M.M. to the hospital and that kid's face lit up from seeing a real hero, that was so heartwarming. And him coming to the rescue, body slamming the deep, was a jaw-dropping moment that was top tier. Their 15 second fight wasn't as good as Homelander fighting Soldier Boy and Butcher, but it was still up there with the best action in this show. And of course, the season ending with human genocide, for now only in the tower, is fitting considering it had been hinted at the whole show, even before this season. And the final shot showing how the boys are in quite a bad spot really got me excited for the next season. But before I wrap up, I want to mention one last thing. Because of all people, it was Annie's doppelganger who put the themes of the show best. And I'm paraphrasing what she said, but everyone justifies their actions by turning themselves into the victim. And I think that's the perfect distillation of everything this show is about. If you agree or just want to let me know your thoughts on this show, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly video essays and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.